Hey, Dr. Mike here. Bladder issues got you going all the time? Stay tuned to learn how nutrition can help with Dr. Tracy Seipel. You're listening to Live Foreverish, a show dedicated to helping you live just a little longer. Here's your hosts, Dr. Mike and Dr. Crystal Gosser. All right, welcome to Live Foreverish. Dr. Crystal, we have a, a great show going on today. Um, you know, bladder issues are significant for so many people. Women, yes, and that's where we focus. But you know, us guys also, you know, when you're my age, and that prostate gland starts getting a little big, we get uh, your urinary issues as well. So I'm excited to talk about this today. We have Dr. Tracy Seipel. She's a naturopathic clinician, medical herbalist. There she is right there, clinical nutritionist, and diabetes educated with 30 years of experience in clinical practice settings. Now, here's the thing. During her research as product formulator for many nutraceuticals uh, companies, she uncovered the significant prevalence and underreporting of urinary incontinence and overactive bladder, which led her to her pioneering natural health category. Welcome to the show. It's great to be here. So, you know, right, let's, let's get right into this with the urinary issues. What, like, I, so I just already said, like, I'm a guy in my fifth. I got, I, yeah, my prostate's getting a little bigger. Robson, our producer, eh, he, he won't admit it, but he's probably going through the same thing, whatever. Um, so what are the main types of urinary bladder issues that, that all of us face? But let's focus this on women specifically. On women, well... Most of us may have problems with urgency or frequency or men especially getting out of bed at night for the bathroom. But women, a key issue with women is actually urinary incontinence or having accidents and wetting yourself when you don't want to. So it's really a big problem for women. Um, the figures, every time we look at them, they go up. So they're estimating now it's up to 78 million American women have bladder accidents. And unfortunately, they're not talking about it, not discussing it, and not looking for solutions when there are effective solutions out there. Well, and can you, um, for our audience, give us an overall definition, I guess the difference between the frequency, the urgency, I know there's, and the incontinence, which is, I think, what you're referring to with the with the accidents. Is that correct? And there's kind of a difference between the two. I think what Dr. Mike's talking about with men, that's more of the frequency, the waking up at night, and that's the pressure yes. that the prostate's, you know, putting on the bladder. But I think for women, yes. there are other things going on. So can we kind of lay the groundwork with some of those definitions? Sure, sure. So there are probably two areas we look at. One is overactive bladder, and that's where you get that urgency, that strong urge. You have to go to the bathroom. You don't get a lot of warning. And you may have an accident with that, urgency, incontinence. Uh, quite often, um, th there'll be frequency, so you'll go often. Up to eight times in a 24-hour period is normal. But if you're going to the bathroom every hour or hour and a half, even every two hours, that's too frequently. Uh, so so the, that's sort of more overactive bladder. Actually, getting up at night for the bathroom is also a symptom of overactive bladder. But for women with with childbearing and the weight of the pregnancy, um, also with obesity or constipation, it puts a lot of strain on the pelvic floor. And if you imagine the bladder is a muscle and the pelvic floor muscles sit underneath the bladder and hold it up, what happens is the pelvic floor with increasing pregnancy, it gets stretched and doesn't really bounce back after pregnancy. So what happens is it's not holding up the bladder, it's not supporting the sphincters, of the bladder outlet and what happens is um, women have accidents if they put more stress on the pelvic floor such as coughing laughing jumping sneezing and there's no warning with that um, and as i said it affects a very large number of women um, after childbirth often it will improve but for a, a number of for about 40 percent of women it doesn't improve at all so so that's what women are getting it's the stress urinary urinary incontinence or the accidents they can get urgency incontinence as well or a mixture of incontinence of stress and urgency and that's really most of the incontinence that we're dealing with mm. now i'll have to tell you 
my first experience, I'll just let you know, Dr. Mike, he knows I have two kids. We went to the trampoline park. We went to the trampoline park and I said, I'm going to jump on these trampolines as well. One jump. I said, nope, that's okay. You kids can handle the trampoline. That was it. I said, oh no, I felt it. And, and so I kind of refer to those pelvic floor muscles as like a hammock as well. They, they're just, they can get, I guess, stretched out. And I, with two kids, for sure, it is, it's something that many women deal with and may not talk about. Yeah. I, I always, I used to refer to the, uh, uh, pelvic floor muscles as like a basket, you know, and, and, and as you put more weight in it, the basket starts to, the bottom starts to kind of like give out. So, and, and just for our audience, it may, I mean, yes, pregnancy is having, having babies is a huge issue, but for some women too, it might just be being overweight, um, obesity, you know, so it's not, so, so we're not just speaking to the the women that have had kids, you know, there's, there's a lot of women, um, that could experience this even age itself, right? Dr. Cycle, like it's age itself. Those muscles get weaker, right? That's correct. And it, it's just very common, uh, for incontinence to increase with aging. The, the estimates are one in three women have a bladder control problem, have incontinence. But once you hit 50, that round that menopause mark, it goes to about half. So 50% of women but if you if you are over the age of 65, 70, it's three quarters of women. So wow. it definitely worsens with age. Yeah, and, and it's it's just very prevalent, a very prevalent issue. So I, I want to move into so so as a conventional medical doctor, right, for myself, I mean, there's not much we offer um women in this way. It, 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 it's just it, there is it. Guys, okay, let's try to shrink the prostate. Fine. Uh, but when it comes to strengthening those pelvic muscles there's really not a lot of drugs that can do that maybe some surgery if it's real bad so like what, what is your opinion about the conventional approach to this the, the conventional approach is um that the the major pharmaceuticals that are used to address incontinence one year after being prescribed less than 35 percent of women are still taking them they just don't tolerate them very well they cause a lot of dryness increased thirst confusion so compliance is really an issue and what we find is most people actually use adult diapers that's how they manage they use the diapers or modify their lifestyle you know much like um you were saying you know they don't jump on that trampoline they'll reduce their exercising stop socializing stop even traveling more than an hour away from home so so what you find is women with incontinence will tend to become quite reclusive and isolated and you know it's 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 a downward slope really because there's also early admission to nursing care as a result of incontinence so um so sort of that's sort of what's what's going on and what we're looking at with people with these bladder control problems so what you know as a naturopathic physician uh, i'm sure that you and i've i've you have followed your work and I, I understand that, you know, women were coming into your practice and you were investigating different herbs and, and nutritional support. And what were, I think, initially some of those things that you suggested nutrition wise? And then we can talk about some of, you know, the combination of herbs that you discovered to be the, the magic. Yes, yes. Well, um, a lot of what we look at is what else could be triggering. I mean, of course, if the person um, is overweight or has constipation to try and address that, keep the fluid levels up. And that's the irony is with bladder control problems, people often reduce their fluid intake and it's important to maintain that six to eight glasses a day and teaching the bladder to hold on a little bit longer when you're near a bathroom and can actually do that. It just... The bladder is a muscle. It actually learns to fill a little bit more and, and you know, empty a little bit more completely as well. Uh, things like uh, diuretics, things that increase urine production and output. So alcohol, um, caffeine, sort of coffee, tea, even if you're having a lot of chocolate, they can really be bladder irritants and exacerbate incontinence. So it's important to 
reduce or use decaffeinated beverages, for example. Sometimes things like citrus fruits, um, orange juice and stone fruits can, watermelon even, so they can um, aggravate the bladder a little bit in susceptible people. So I often get people to trial, trial stopping it for a few weeks and then having it again and see does it make it better or worse. So, so there are those practical measures that people can do as well as pelvic floor exercises, which is, or the Kegels exercises, which are when you're urinating, if you try and stop urinating midstream, they're the pelvic floor muscles that you're using. So the person first has to identify the muscles and then not during urination, but at other times of the day, just practice holding those muscles for, if you can, up to a count of 10, do that three times, and then just repeat that multiple times throughout the day. That can actually help strengthen those pelvic floor muscles and and give a bit of a control back as well. So they're, they're sort of the practical suggestions we look at. Yeah. So, but you now listen. You've been researching this for a long time, Doctor Saipo. Right? I mean, I mean, you're the expert, and you came up with a nice like nutritional blend here, right? So let's talk about that. Let's talk about the research behind the formulation you came up. With. Okay. Well, my research initially started. I was working a lot with non-bacterial cystitis, which is just inflammation of the bladder. And I was using crativa, which is an Indian herb, the bark of, of the crativa tree. And there was a actually a national survey in Australia in one of our magazines back when people still read magazines. And they looked at the top five health concerns of Australian women. And incontinence was number three. I was really quite shocked. I knew heart disease, weight control, osteoporosis, but it just it just, you know, that was more than 20 years ago it highlighted to me how serious and concerning for the individual this um, problem was. So I knew I could um, effectively, a lot of women with cystitis had incontinence as well. So I knew I had the start of what would eventually become the Eurox blend. Uh, and I just kept researching. I combined with horsetail. Uh, I used that formula for a while. Did We did conducted um, published research with that formula. Then I found by adding the Lindera and with the specific extract I was using, Lindera is a Japanese traditional medicine. Um, and with the, with the standardization and the extract I used, I found the results I was getting at three months, I could achieve faster at one month. So the development of the Yogg's formula really occurred over perhaps a 10 or 12 year period. And then of course, we went on to conduct further research to confirm, you know, to confirm the effectiveness of the formula. Wow. So yes, let's t- let's get into some of that research uh, yeah. and, and the clinical studies that you have. Okay, great. Yeah. So uh, what we looked at uh, were people who had in- either incontinence or the urgency, the rushing uh, or frequency or getting out of bed at night. So those were to be included in the clinical research trials, they had to have at least two of those four symptoms. And what we found with, with the incontinence, we found that 67% of women had, uh, sorry, there was a 67% reduction in incontinence episodes. We had 75% of people reduce their diaper usage and 23% of people actually were continent at the end of the trial. So they, they had real control of their bladder, yes. And that was over an eight-month, uh, sorry, eight-week period. Uh, we measured the first results at two weeks and we did see significance with the statistical significance with the results, but the best results were at the four and then the eight week period. So, and it is important often with herbal medicines and, and um, complementary medicines, they're different to pharmaceuticals in that they don't work straight away. You do have to take it for a few weeks, maybe a couple of months, and then you get the best results because it's building it's supporting the muscle and just building the strength of the area. It takes a little time. I, I, Dr. Seipel, I, I still think four to eight weeks is still a nice time frame. That, that's yes. not bad. I mean, let's be honest, you know, right? Yeah. So, and, and how old were were these individuals? So the uh, they were aged from um, late 20s up to uh, mid 70s. So we had a very good spread. And that's the beauty of it. The the blend doesn't discriminate against age. I mean, we've had we've had a number of users over the age of a hundred and still achieving results. So, and and I was often surprised. I thought it would be sort of um, women up to the age of 65, 70, You know, where 
am I in denial here? Well, we still have some collagen, you know, because the collagen content of the muscle is very important to regain the control. But, but yeah, younger women, middle-aged women and older women all respond um, and can regain their bladder control. And that's the message I'd like to share with people that just because you're older, you don't have to put up with incontinence. A lot of women think, it's just their lot in life and they have to put up with it and they don't. They can they can take measures and regain a lot of that control. And even if it's not 100% control, you know, if you're going to the bathroom every two and a half hours instead of every one hour, suddenly you can get on a plane, you know, you travel, you can stay overnight, it, it, you regain that freedom. It's significant. Yeah, it's significant. It, just for the listening audience, can you give us, uh, again, the specifics of the formula? What are the ingredients? What's the dosing? Because I want to make sure that they understand what they're looking for. Yes. So it's it's the Urox blend and what the what it is, it's three herbal combinations. So Crativa herb, horsetail, equisetum, and Lindira herb. And the dosage is 420 milligrams in a capsule twice a day. So it's a two-capsule daily dose. You can take them together. In the trial, in our research, we had people take them together because it doesn't work in the bottle, right? You know, so if they forget that second dose, uh, they're only going to get half as much uh, effectiveness. So, so yeah, it's just two capsules a day, like most supplements. Unless there's a reason not to take it with food, it's better to take with food. You digest it a little bit better, uh, and you don't have to take it at night. You know, just just once or twice a day, depending if you're having two at once or one at once. And then really um, after a few weeks, people should really start to see some effects, but just keep persevering for that couple of months uh, to get the best results. And then people do then have to stay on the formula to maintain those results. But the beauty is that um, they, they they keep good control. So, so they can achieve good results and then maintain those results long term. And, and, and very safe, right? Yes, yes. There's no known interactions or very well tolerated and that's the that's the great thing about it um because people can stay on it and and feel fine there, there is one if you call it a side effect um uh, because the the horsetail we've got a very high level of organic silica so one side effect of the formula is it does improve your collagen and connective tissue elsewhere in the body so hair skin and nails tend to improve on yeah, the formula that, that, I'll that's take the, it. side effects can be negative and positive that's i'll positive. take it well, that, Dr. Seipel, how do you think this is, it's working? What is it doing exactly? Yes, yeah, so we, 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 have con, um, we, we have had mechanism of action research being conducted. What it seems to do is, uh, well, based on the research, is it stops the part of the brain that tells your bladder to empty. Um, it, it, some people it's overactive, so it just can't, it stops that overactive message coming from the brain while it doesn't affect normal bladder emptying just stops that excessive excessive level of communication it also makes the bladder muscle more compliant so it's better able to relax and fill and contract and empty so you get more complete bladder emptying Um, it also reduces an oversensitive bladder lining and by supporting the bladder muscle and the pelvic floor muscle um, you're getting better control of those sphincters that sort of hold the urine in uh, it, basically, you're getting a more compliant bladder that's listening to you, and it does what you're telling it to do. Yeah, yeah. I like the idea that it's focusing some of that on complete empty because that I, when you when you retain urine, that's maybe that's the irritation a little bit, and that's why it may cause some of these. So I like that it's it's helping women and and men like completely get rid of the urine. I think that's important. Yes, that's that's right. It is because you. I mean, you can be more prone to infections as well um, with that residual urine. It, it needs sure. an especially as we get older, right? Especially as we. I mean, UTIs. That's like a that, that's a huge hit on the older population. It is. It, it's a massive area, and in fact, we we have we have done some research with the um, with the urox and uh, with with um, calming and an irritated bladder, and just for that soothing and calming effect it's quite beneficial for that as well and and so just to clarify because i did read through um the the study that you referenced and men were included in that research right yes yes we we did include men in the research and men it's interesting uh 
I know we're talking mainly about women today, but with men, men, there's sort of this conception that it's all related to the prostate, male urinary. And what happens with the prostate enlarges and the bladder has to work double time or triple time. So it's actually the bladder becomes quite, with prostate enlargement, the bladder can become very rigid and it just doesn't relax and fill and contract and empty. So uh, that the, the estimation is up to half of male urinary symptoms, urinary control symptoms are overactive bladder and not prostate enlargement. So so the men in our trial um, had overactive bladder uh, and not prostate enlargement. And yeah, and they did really well. We halved nocturia for men in the two-month period and they reduced their urgency um, by 60%. So really great yeah. results for them as well. Yes. Yeah. Same, same time frame? Same time Forest frame. Um, yeah, the urgency improved a little bit faster than the incontinence and the nocturia started from two weeks. It's interesting when you're looking at taking something for the prostate or something for the bladder, the bladder um, the bladder response occurs faster. So, so, so yeah, the, the Eurox blend for male urinary, uh, they, they can take it alone or combine it with their prostate um, formula as well. And just for those men that don't get the full effects and they're going, I'm taking my prostate formula, but I'm still having bladder problems, they probably should focus a little bit more on the bladder if that's the case. And that they'll get a more yep. comprehensive result. Good point. Yeah. yeah. You're cool. listening to Dr. Tracy Seidbull, a naturopathic clinician, medical herbalist, clinical nutritionist, and she's come up with an awesome formula uh, for overactive bladder and urinary incontinences. Do Dr. Seidbull, like, what, what's your take home message for our audience? Like, what's that, what's that elevator pitch about what you've been researching and doing? Yeah, the, the elevator pitch is that bladder problems are really common. There's no need to be embarrassed about it. And there's no need to put up with it, that you can do something about it. Um, you know, you can use the Eurox blend to regain control. You can make some dietary and lifestyle adjustments and you can regain that freedom that you thought you'd lost forever. So I just think people, and this is great, you're discussing it on your show. I really appreciate it because the more we talk about it and bring it out in the open, the more people can can discuss it and find solutions that are effective for them. How can our listeners learn more about you and uh, the formula you've created? Um, about me? Oh, I wasn't expecting that. Uh <laughs> you? You're Jimmy, come on. You, you're... You're the guest. I'm really, I'm really bad on social. I don't, you know, I have it, but, uh, but uh, my children keep telling me. Um, yeah, you know, we we have, um, you know, the Eurox formula is in, is in, the Eurox ingredient is in obviously other other formulations. And if they just go to our, our Cyborg Group site, they can learn more information. Or the National Association for Continents actually is a site that gives a lot of tips. It gives the pelvic floor exercises, bladder retraining exercises. So I touched on both of those and even some dietary suggestions. So so there are there are sites where people can go and gain more information and ask their um, their health practitioner as well. Uh, they can get some information there. Thanks for coming on today. This was awesome information. Yeah. Dr. Crystal, do you have any last comments or no, I would say the uh, takeaway for me that I I need to just write down and shout it to the rooftop is keep drinking water. Yes. Yes. Uh, right. Yes. <laughs> right. Yeah. That, because it's simple. Stop. Yeah. They're there. And so this idea of kind of training and that, that the pelvic floor muscles or the bladder to me, that's a, a nugget. So thank you for sharing. Yes. No, that's, that's great. And thank you for having me on. I mean, it's just great. As I said, to keep, keep the bladder message going so that, um, People can have the better quality of life. That's what we all want. Thank you so much. Uh, so, Do Dr. Seipel, thanks for coming on. Our sponsor, Life Extension, would like to offer a discount, 10% off with $50 or more and free shipping and handling. You just go to lifeextension.com, buy what you want, and when you check out, Dr. Crystal, what do they type in? Podcast. Podcast. That's all you got to do. Uh, so go check that out. And don't forget at Life Ex uh, I'm sorry, at liveforeverish.com. Too many websites, Dr. Crystal. Liveforeverish.com. That's where you can find all of our episodes. We're well over 400, Dr. Crystal. Oh, for well, sure. Yeah. Um, when you do download one, like, 
share. Oh, um, I was waiting for you. Share. Subscribe. Um, uh, and that way, so you never miss a show, uh, liveforeverish.com. Check that out. I'm Dr. Mike, and that is... Dr. Crystal. Wrong way. Wrong way. Dr. Crystal. Do that. All right. Thanks for listening.